Okay, so welcome to part 3 of this video on the uh, negative binomial distribution. Uh, so what we've done is we said, okay, uh, we want the probability that x1 plus x2 all the way up to xr is equal to i. We're imagining that we've got r children, we've got i biscuits, and we're saying share these biscuits out. Well, not necessarily in a fair way. Just give these i biscuits in any way you like to these r children. So you might have a favourite child, and you might give all the biscuits to that child. Um, so um, just do something along, uh, so we want to know how many different ways are there of ascribing the i biscuits to the r children and we've shown that that is equal to i plus r minus 1 choose r minus 1. So now we're saying given a specific way of distributing the biscuits, we gave four biscuits to r, child i, uh, xr, we gave three biscuits to x2, uh, two biscuits to child x1, and uh, we uh, gave lots of biscuits to the people in between as well, such that all of the biscuits overall added up to i, uh, what's the probability of that happening? And because the, the variables are independent, uh, it's going to be equal to probability that xi is equal to 2 times the probability that x2 is equal to 3, all the way up to times the probability that probability of xr is equal equal to 4. Now we say uh, all of these variables xi were distributed geometrically uh, with respect to p. Uh, therefore, the probability that xi is equal to so, uh, is equal to some, and I've just realized that I'm using i as this variable here. Let's, let's use a different variable there, xj xj, because I don't want to get it to get confused with this i up here. The probability that xj, oh, see it, the probability that the random variable xj is equal to some, let's say, n, is equal to um, the uh, probability that you get ahead to, uh, times uh, q to the power of n. So this is the probability that you get n, uh, n, uh, n tails before you get ahead, and that's going to be equal to uh, q times q times q n times, then times p, which is the probability you get a p uh, on that um, on that n plus 1 throw. Okay, uh, so then what we can do is we can fill all of this in. So we can fill in the probability that x1 is equal to 2 is p times uh, q uh, to the 2. T then we've got p times q to the 3. And then we go on all the way up to p times q to the 4. Then we can apply the exponential rule. Uh, well, we can apply the law of indices for exponentials. And we'll get P, we have P R times because it's going to appear in each one of these, and we have R of these. We get P to the power of R, and then we get uh, we get Q um, to the power of two plus three plus lots of bits in between plus four. But what are all of these going to add up to? They are going to add up to I. So we're going to get that it's P to the R. Q to the i. And what's the importance of that? That we get that it does not matter the probability that this uh, that uh, this happens. It did not matter how you distributed the biscuits. It was absolutely equal. No matter how, the probability was independent of how you actually uh, distributed these i things to these r, r x's, to these r x our random variables. So it did not matter that it was 2, 3, 4. We could have distributed it however we wanted. This could have been 10, this could have been 11, uh, and this could have been 5. As long as they all added up, all of these in the middle, they all added up to i, the probability uh, of it happening is the same. And it's given by this formula here. Okay, uh, so now we can say that the probability that x1 plus um, x2 plus all the way up to x through r is equal to i is equal to the sum over every way you could distribute the i biscuits, every way you can distribute i among um, r random variables. So every possible way of the probability of those specific values. So uh, the probability that x1 is equal to whatever it is specifically, so the specific value what one all the way down to probability that x uh, r is equal to some specific value r. So these are going to vary uh, as the sum. So you're going to sum over every single one. But we've shown that uh, the number of ways, the number of uh, possible combinations is equal to uh, i plus r, i plus r minus 1, choose r minus 1, firstly, so that's interesting. And then we have also shown that the probability of, that this product here is independent of how you distribute it. So it's PR, Q 
QI. So we're going to add up PR, QI, this many times. So overall, this probability is given by I plus R minus 1, choose R minus 1, times P to the R, Q to the I. Okay, so there you go. That is the PMF of the uh, negative binomial distribution. So this is the probability that big X, which was the, this original random variable that we said was distributed negatively binomially, uh, is equal to some i. So there you go. That is the PMS of the, uh, of the negative binomial distribution. Now, let's calculate the expected value for the negative binomial distribution, uh, which is quite easy now because, uh, well... I'm going to wave my hands a bit here uh, because uh, my proof of linearity for expectation values relied on the original abstract probability space having um, having um, either finitely many or countably infinitely many. Actually, oh, that's fine, that's fine. I was going to apologise because uh, this wasn't count of the infinite, but it is count of the infinite. So this probability space only has a count of the infinite number of ways. Remember, this was the original probability space of all outcomes of throwing a coin, um, of flipping a coin two times. I think that is... Yes, it is, most definitely, I think. Yes, yes. I. Oh, actually, maybe it's not. Let, I, I just want to I'll have a think about whether that is is, uh, let's have a think about whether our original probability space had a count of the infinite number of things in. So, uh, you start off, the first thing you do, you can either get a head or a tail, then it can branch off again, it can branch off again, it can branch off again. Is that going to be countable? Well, you can go, you can count it like this, you can go from this one uh, to this one. So, oh no, you can't, you're going to have to count these things down here. Hmm, hmm. Is that going to be countable? I'm not sure whether it's going to be countable or not, uh, but um, I'd have to think about it more. Uh, but the point is that, uh, the, uh, that the linearity formula does not require the uh, probability space to be countably infinite. So even if this original probability space wasn't countably infinite, uh, then the linearity property still holds true. So we can say that the expected value overall of x is going to be the sum of the expected values of xj, uh, so uh, summed from j is equal to 1 to r. An expected value of a, of a distribution uh, which is geometrically distributed, uh, is going to be equal to Q over P. We derived that in a previous video. Uh, therefore, uh, it's independent of J. Therefore, we're just going to get Q times R over P as this sum. So that is the expected value for the... Um, for the um, what distribution have we been doing? The negative binomial distribution.